G'day, g'day. Uh, people often ask which direction should you run these pumps. Now I've seen them with arrows marked on the top here and uh, over here and it says that way or this way and you know it's kind of confusing in that way. The, the, what, what I would say is you're, you're logically you want to actually if you're looking at it from this side you want to be running it this way if your wheel is mounted on the other side well then you want to be running it once again clockwise but if you're looking at it from that side it's anti-clockwise looking at it from this side you want to be running it clockwise because what you've got is you've got your sump down the bottom there and the way it goes is you've got your eccentric in there and the eccentric is dipping into the oil and then if it's going clockwise it's coming back around like that sort of thing this one's a bit stiff but that's the general idea so the shaft staying stationary and the eccentric is dropping into the oil picking the oil up now if you're running it anti-clockwise <coughs> it's dropping the eccentric in, <laughs> into the oil and it's scooping it and it's pushing the oil to the front of the machine over here whereas if it's going the other way around it's pushing the oil so that it splashes up against the back and the centrifugal forces because these things they, they run at a reasonable speed um, about 200 rpm so that's a fair bit so that it's it's doing this and so it's, it's moving the oil over now a lot of them have a groove up the top here which then feeds the oil, that oil to the gudgeon pin. Uh, sometimes I even suggest to people is to take an angle grinder and cut there but that's completely at your discretion. Don't blame me if you go too far and you break it. But because there's a little oil feeder hole just in there that sends the oil to the piston. Now it's very hard for the oil to work its way all along there and get to it. Um, but that's how these were designed and it seemed to be a design that went for many years but as soon as they stopped making that groove there I found that it tended to get a, a fair bit more wear I mean this one's not too bad but got a little bit of slack to it you can see you can move it like that um, that yeah and for that reason the oil's not really getting carried along there so if you've got a little milling cutter or even just a tiny wheel on an angle grinder or something and you you do a little trench that leads up to that hole and uh, all in all I think it'll make your pump last a hell of a lot longer but yet yeah, clockwise. Also on the subject of what type of oil now the original specification said that uh, it's best to use a uh, 30 grade oil um, don't use any of the modern artificial stuff synthetic is no good it's too thin you want something that's got a little bit of thickness to it gear oil doesn't work or it does work it actually works quite well but it, it makes a total mess of things it has the uh, uh, propensity to r keep moving on surfaces so for some reason it always works its way out of this joint over here and then works its way out onto the belt and as soon as that stuff goes on your belt turns the belt to jelly and that black stuff, once you get that on your hands, even with the best soaps and uh, industrial washers, it'll be on your hands for about uh, a week. It's pretty much your skin has to wear off to get that black stuff off. It's horrid. So don't, don't use gear oil. Just, I, I use uh, motor oil that's mineral oil and it says uh, for generally for older vehicles and uh, works 100% on these. You, you find manufacturers said change the oil every six months. That's if you're using it every day. Um, most people don't even ever change the oil on these things. They just keep topping them up. That's up to you. Change it down the bottom there, fill it up the top there. So, uh, But that's uh, up to you. Generally, every two years, I change it then at least. So if you're wondering about that groove on the top, if you have a look at this one over here, you'll see. So this one's actually a, uh, a full bronze uh, eccentric strap uh, this one here they've actually ground this section here sometimes it was hard to get them into into the back unit and these seem to be wider than the others if you if you compare them 
um, and uh, so it looks like they've ground that just to get that in on the on the new section or when they've replaced it but uh, uh, these generally always came with the trench in up the top and then the hole and if you look down that hole you can see straight onto that gudgeon pin and that's your that's the part the, the, the gudgeon pin shouldn't really move in the piston itself, it should stick there, but uh, it needs to be able to move freely on on that side there. So you really uh, do benefit from having this because as the oil is being flicked over, it'll certain amount, not much, doesn't need much, will run down and it tends to be captured in that groove and fed straight to that gudgeon pin. And even if it's uh, the pins moving on the on the piston, Everything there is going to be much more oil than, you know, oil's cheaper than parts. Nobody's currently making these things. Uh, I've got some molds for them. I'm considering it, but the, the expense is just a bit uh, prohibitive at the moment. I don't really want to have it made in a country that makes poor quality gear either. So, 